Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Say Mojo Homestead. It is a beautiful Saturday morning. We had rain for the better half of yesterday and then well into the night. They were actually, I thought, calling for rain today, but it is so nice. Check this out. Look at that. Sun is coming up. Beautiful skies, birds are singing, chickens are fluttering. Uh, <laughs> and that means I get roosters crowing. I get to work in the garden and get some stuff done. I'm coming out here to get all the animals fed through those chores. Cass and the girls are gone again this weekend, but it is the last dance competition, guys. So excited. I love that the girls dance. I love that they love it. Um, and the fact that they are really good at it. Uh, but the reality is, is dance competition season always hits right as the homestead stuff picks up. So I am always glad when it gets on. Look at these little birdies. Our meat chicks are getting so big. Everything is definitely a little bit muddy after the rain last night. I also can't get over like how green everything is, like all the woods behind me. It always amazes me every single year how fast everything buds out. Like, like you see it coming and then, I mean, it's, it feels like it's overnight, like overnight, all of a sudden the woods just become so green, so lush, so beautiful. I just love this time of year. Look at all these little baby goats. They're so nice. So there's two of ours. Those are Esther's. They're the first ones born. They're getting pretty big. And then here comes Frost with her babies right there. Aren't they cute? I love those. And then Esther is back there by herself, which is pretty normal when she's wanting to feed them. She always takes them kind of away from the herd so that she can feed them in private. She is the kind of low goat on the totem pole. So I think that's why she does it. Hey, I know, I know. You looking for scratches? You looking for scratches? Huh? So these guys are getting close to where we can start locking the babies up at night and milking in the morning, which I am so excited, so ready to get back into goat milk and also get our stock back up for the soaps, which we will be doing the Fulmer Street Market in Batesburg with, you know, just selling the soaps and stuff. The first one was actually Thursday. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in this video, but um, had a ton of fun. We are planning on being out there every time. Uh, there's a couple of weeks I don't think that we're gonna be able to make it, but for the most part, every time. So if you're in the area or if you're there, be sure to come find us and Check out our soaps, our goat milk soaps. We think that they're pretty amazing. Cass, we have never really talked much about this, but um, Cass has actually found a way to maximize and really bump up the quality of goat milk soap. So the process she does is a little bit different than your traditional way of making goat milk soap. It is truly a raw goat milk soap product, which most goat milk soap, the, the, uh, the goat milk is not going to be raw. It's going to be pasteurized and heated and all of that. So she has found a way to do it and still preserve all of those qualities of raw milk. And there is a very noticeable difference. So did not mean to uh, go into like a little ad promo thing there, but there you have it. Um, I'm going to be re still establishing or finish establishing all of the rows over there and then getting wood chips down. So let's get started and let's talk about wood chips. I'm gonna actually take you guys around to this wood chip pile. Now we use uh, chip drop, which if you're familiar with it, then you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, what it is is a website that you can go onto and sign up to have wood chips brought to your property. Hey, Victoria. Uh, you have no say in when they bring it, in the type of tree. You, you have a little bit of say in the type of wood, but not really. You can't be picky with it. This is a service that is benefiting both you and the tree company. 
And so when you do that, you're going to sacrifice a little bit of convenience. The only say that you get is where they're going to dump it. But you have no clue how much they're going to bring. It could be up to 20 yards. Um, it could be as little as like five yards. It's going to be whatever that tree company has in the moment when they need to drop it. So this is one thing like you can't be too particular about it because it is free or you can give uh, a donation. So it costs the tree company $20 to use it per drop. So what I always do is just donate $20. What that does is it does up your chances of getting it because the tree companies can be choosy. Like they're looking and they can see who has donated because that money, that donated money is gonna go to the tree company. Um, and they will pick the ones who are gonna cover their costs. This is it. And these actually smell like a hardwood. Yes. Yeah, that smells like oak, which is great. Normally you're gonna get pines and stuff like that in our area, um, but the oak is really good. So now I'm really hoping that we have enough left over to where I can pile it up behind the greenhouse. This is the area we're talking about possibly turning into a mushroom garden. I would love to be able to have hardwood. Yep, I see bark it is definitely oak. I would love to be able to have uh, hardwood wood chips to put down there to grow like the wine caps, which really just grow in mulch. You don't have to inoculate logs with those. Uh, from what I understand, they're super easy to grow and rather tasty. So. I would love to be able to just fill that area with wood chips to be able to do that. But the main reason we got these is not for, because of that, it's for our garden pads. All right, guys, so I may have been wrong. Forecast may have been right from what I remembered. It is starting to cloud up, but we're gonna keep plowing away. We're gonna get as much done as we possibly can out here. So what I am working on is trying to get an edging in to hold the rocks in place. So we wanted to kind of have, you know, accent that area. Also, I had some leftover rocks from a project, needed to do something with them. So what better way to use them than in your own garden? So what I'm doing is digging out a trench so that I can get the edging in that will hold the rocks in place and keep the mulch out of that area, the, the mulch wood chips that are gonna be the path. Overall, I think it, it, it's gonna work. It's gonna it's gonna be okay so, so next on the agenda is working on getting some of these paths established what we do with our garden paths is we do use the wood chip mulch the reason is is because it allows it to break down and basically do the same thing that's going to do in a garden like if you're covering your whole garden with it they're going to break down they're going to hold the moisture and everything else and it's still going to benefit your garden soil if you don't know can wick water meaning if our paths are holding water longer because of the wood chips, then that soil next to it, so all of our planting rows, will draw that water out. Um, so you're getting the benefit of that. You're also getting the benefit of it breaking down. We're gonna leach into the soil in a good way. So that's why we prefer to have it. The other reason that I like having it for paths is it keeps the weeds down in the path and it allows for a cushion for us to walk on it protects the soil so we're not just completely compacting the soil in those pads there will be roots from our vegetables that grow into the pads and access that space so the better we can keep the pads the better health we can keep those pads in the better health the whole garden will be in um, it is starting to rain was able to get a decent amount done the rain kind of comes in and get, then leaves again so was able to get a little bit more done than I anticipated. I did realize though, I on purpose, but had forgotten that I left my wheelbarrow at the job I was on this week because we're gonna be back out there next week. So <sighs> my fault, I cannot do the mulch today, but that's okay. We're working on getting all of these established. I wanna walk you guys through, I don't know how well it's gonna come through on the video, but I wanna walk you guys through this spiral section kind of the labyrinth section of our garden um, as it's starting to take shape now nothing's really been defined yet because we haven't the top dressed with top compost on the rows and we haven't gotten the wood chips down in the path so it's a little bit tricky to see like really where those things are defined but i'm going to show you how it's changing i'm going to try to do it so you guys are kind of following behind and maybe you can get that full effect but you're going to come in you're going to walk in so Last year, we had it to where you entered right here. 
But this year, we're going to close this off completely so that we can get a um, wall of tomatoes right here. So you're not even going to be able to see into this whole area back here. Uh, instead, the way that you're going to get in is you're going to come to this dead end. You're going to have to turn left. And then you got the spiral that starts here. And so we'll walk through here, brings you straight to the greenhouse, which Cass really wanted to be able to get straight to the greenhouse, direct shot. So that's going to give that to her. Then the only option is to continue straight. This is one thing that is kind of changing this year because we did have to where you could have options on which way you wanted to travel through this thing. So this year that's changing. You're not going to have that option. You're going to have to go on the path, one direction. Come through the bean TP, and then we start to spiral back out. But you can't get out. So last year, again, here's the entry. You used to be able to get out right there. That's gonna be closed off. So we're next to the wall of tomatoes. So we're inside that tomato room, if you will. You're gonna come around this way, and then this is the only place you can kind of pick. This is the turnaround spot. So left or right, we'll go. Yeah. We'll go right, it feels right. We'll have a bench over here, kind of a just nice seating area. This is why, because this is the view from this bench. Looks out over the garden, greenhouse, all of this. There'll be a break in the wall here, so you'll be able to kind of peek into the room. It'll be nice. I'm excited about that view. Asparagus bed over here, which, whoo, we need to come pick. And then this is where I'm gonna break through with the path and have it to where you can walk in. This will just loop around, go next to that rock because that's gonna be kind of a, another place to sit around the banana tree, which hopefully still waiting to see if that comes back and then just back out. So almost like a lollipop. Then we'll continue. This is the loop. This is how you turn around and you start to spiral back in to then spiral back out. So yeah. Convenience wise to run into the garden to get something on that backside. This is not for convenience. <laughs> this is purely for the effect and to be able to just have time in the garden um, to really create that space to force you to slow down and take your time in the garden. That is what this is intended for. Let me grab my coffee cup while we're passing by. These, you do have the exit points here. In that design video, this is what I was talking about. Like when you walk in, it's gonna be really inconvenient to double back into one of these. But on the way out, then this, these areas over here sort of beckon you in because they're angled in such a way that will kind of grab you and pull you in. So as you leave, these things are angled to kind of pull you into one and Keep you going through the garden. So this whole design is really intended to keep you in the garden, to make us want to stay in here, to get us lost, and to just have a space where we forget time and forget the responsibilities of just busy life and get lost in here and just enjoy the abundance that will be in a few months. So I'm really excited. I'm loving the way this coming together. I'm just like, every time I walk in here, I just envision like this wall and this room and these little side pads and everything else and just how we're gonna use it and the effect, psychological effect that it will have on us in a good way. Joe and I are going to be going to the dance competition later today. Meanwhile though, I'm gonna keep cranking this garden out, getting these rows in so that when I do have my wheelbarrow, we will be ready to go. All right, it has been a pretty good weekend. Joe and I did make it to the girls' competition. They did very well. Several high scores and even first place finishes in bigger categories. So, so proud of them. What a great way for them to finish up their competition season with dance. 
I did not get a chance to film highs and lows with Cass, so I'm just going to do it by myself again this week. Um, my high this week was definitely going to the Fulmer Street Market. It was so great to meet some of you guys out there and be able to interact. The weather was perfect. I didn't really get anything like picture or footage wise out there, but Homesteading in Hungary did a great kind of overview video of that. So I will link their channel and that video down in the description below. Be sure to check it out. It was really fun and come out. It's going to be a regular thing Thursdays in the afternoon, early evening. So it is well worth it. There were so many great vendors there. My low for the week would be probably Esther's babies. Um, she's all of our goats had two babies, uh, if you haven't been keeping up with that. And Esther has just not been great with maternal instincts this go around. Uh, goats can tend to do that, especially like our goats who came off of a dairy where the kids were always pulled. Um, last year, she did a pretty good job, but Esther is our lowest producer. So it's oftentimes a little bit more difficult for her to keep up with the feeding uh, demands of her babies. But all day yesterday, they were calling out to her. She wasn't completely ignoring them, but she was not letting them nurse. So today we got to go get bottles and we are going to try to get them to start taking a bottle just to supplement. We do not want to completely take them away from her. I want her to have that responsibility, but Obviously, we will keep a close eye on the babies to make sure they are getting what they need. Now, neither one of them look like they are like malnourished or anything like that. Uh, bellies, you can definitely tell have food in them, just probably not as full as we would like for them to be. So the plan right now, heading into next week, is to just supplement one feeding a day and see if that will be sufficient. Um, but we'll see. You know, livestock. There's always adventures. You always got to be willing to take a left when you thought you were going to be going straight. But yeah, we'll get that straightened out. Thank you guys for joining me today. As always, be sure to hit that like button. If you like this material, let us know. And if you haven't hit subscribe, we invite you to do that. Become a part of our YouTube family. Love connecting with you guys. So, you know, comments or find us over on Facebook or Instagram. All of that information is in the description of all of our videos. So until next time, I hope you guys have a great week and be blessed.